now you've dealt with supply and demand for labor or resources in general, now we're ready to put them together and find equilibrium. So the vertical axis, you'll notice, is labor wage, and it's really a price. If it's not uh, talking about labor, then it can't be a wage. It's either interest or profit or rent. And then quantity is down on the horizontal axis. It's still quantity. It's not quantity of products. Remember, it's quantity of laborers or, again, depending on what kind of market graph it is, I'm drawing a, a labor market graph. So at the middle, we have our equilibrium point. We have our wage at equilibrium, wage star, and then quantity star. And there is our equilibrium. If we shift demand or supply, it's still the same as it was for a product market. So shifting in an increase is shifting supply and demand to the right. Any decrease in supply or demand, you shift both curves to the left, depending on what you're talking about. So graphically speaking, it's the same shifting of the curve as it was in the product market. Another thing we're really looking at, remember that we kind of said that the supply of labor is really MRC, and the demand for labor is really VMP or MRP. Um, so really what we're saying is you hire workers and you find equilibrium when MRC is equal to VMP, where there is no surplus, there is no shortage in the market. Minimum wage is a type of disequilibrium in the market created by the government forcing employers and employees to accept a higher wage. So because it's a minimum wage, it's a price floor. Recall that price floors create a surplus and price floors are also drawn above equilibrium. So here's where the minimum wage would be. I'm going to label it minimum wage. And what it creates is disequilibrium in the market. And that's any point, any place where it's not an equilibrium. So what we have here is the quantity demanded. Here is the quantity supplied. So there's more workers, you can tell, than at equilibrium that would be willing to work because the wage is higher. And then demand-wise, firms are less willing to hire workers because they have to pay them a higher wage. So what we've created is a surplus. And it's a surplus of workers. It's not a surplus of products. It's not a shortage of jobs. It's a surplus because, by definition, a price floor must create a surplus of job, of I'm sorry, of workers. Now, land markets are no different than capital or labor markets in terms of general rules of shifting the curves. But land markets feature a supply curve that is perfectly inelastic. The reason being, if you can imagine, if we just take all of the United States, there's only a finite supply of farmable or arable land. So there is no change in that. There's just this is how much land there is. So that's our supply curve. So perfectly inelastic. So we say that you know, we have X number of million square acres that's what we're looking at. There's our supply. That's our quantity right there. Demand is still downward sloping. So just an application of the land market. You know, imagine a non-renewable resource like oil. When will we run out of oil? Economists and business people have often argued about this. When will we run out? Some say 20, some say 50 years. But if we think graphically, the answer is never. Why? Because there's a market for oil. So as the supply decreases and decreases, the rental rate increases until almost no one can afford it. And so eventually people will be forced to substitute a different product in for oil, like natural gas, like electricity. So the supply of oil will continue to diminish, and you'll notice the supply curve will continue to shift left. But then it reaches a point where the demand curve, the price ends up being so high that almost nobody can afford it or people begin to substitute oil out for something else. So now as you can see I've added in rent and quantity. Here are my supply curves as supply decreases to the left as oil runs out. And we notice that the rental rate is eventually going to keep going up. So the oil price will continue going up. And if gasoline is $15 or $100 a gallon, people are going to start substituting oil out for something else. So oil will never really run out. It will become more scarce, yes, and prices will go up or rental rates will go up, yes, but we will never run out of oil.